Welcome back to the Supercoach Enough channel. In this video, we're going to do our Game Week 33 preview for Fantasy Premier League in the 2023-24 season. Uh, so another good week for us in Game Week 32. Um, and so even though I guess last week we reported we were about 15k, we uh, went a bit early before the... Um, I guess the ladders had fully reset. We were just outside the top 20k. Uh, but we have crawled back into the top uh, 20k, 19,000 there. As you can see, you get a green arrow. So I know for those following along closely, might be a bit confused by that. But um, yeah, it was just because I went early on the last video. Uh, so if we have a look at how the team went this week, we had Dubravka in goal. And he scored nine points, which was actually the best result for a goalkeeper. So that worked out fantastic for us. Um, I Nuri with the four. Um, so... We're actually pretty lucky we got his and, I believe, Gordon's score. Yeah, so Gusto and Foden both missed out uh, last game week. So getting those points off our bench into our team uh, worked out really nicely. Gabrielle White both with a clean sheet. So, you know, this is why we stacked up on the double Arsenal defence is getting ready for game week 34. Plus the fact that they're probably the best defence in the league by distance at the moment. Um, I'm pretty sure these two and Saliba are the top three. It, you'd be pretty bold to go, you know, three Arsenal defence. But um, it might be something we, we look at for the run home potentially, given, I guess, some of the other options in midfield. Um, but we had Saka as our third Arsenal option and he went well with 10 points. Uh, Salah got a goal from that uh, that penalty, so eight points for him. Um, Gordon obviously come on and we got three points out of him. Palmer got an assist, which sort of saved our captaincy shout, so uh, ten points in total for Palmer. Harlan with goal and Isak and Solanke both blanking. And then on our bench, as we already saw, Foden and Gusto both missed out. Um, Bradley did play, so Alexander Arnold's injury has extended, um, return date has extended a little bit, but uh, I guess both for Bradley and Kelleher, it looks like that Allison and Alexander Arnold are going to both be available for the double game week. So might have to make some decisions there. And obviously, you know, with these guys being so lowly priced, um, there's not a lot of room for movement. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so I guess in terms of transfers this week, which I guess is probably what we're going to talk about, um, realistically, we're going to hold on to this transfer. We're going to try to use two in game week 34, um, particularly when we get a bit more of an idea around the roles that Kelleher and Bradley will potentially play. Um, I, I can probably see a world where, you know, Bradley's still gets at least one game, um, you know, and they ease Alexander-Arnold in off the bench or something like that. Um, but I guess with Kelleher, obviously your goalkeeper's not one you really substitute during a game. So you'd imagine Allison, if he's good to go, will slot straight back in, which at 3.8 does make it a bit tricky um, to, to finesse and, and move around there. Um so, yeah, so I guess, you know, that's one thing to watch out for. But, you know, other than that, we're, we're pretty happy. Like, if we look at our uh, our options, like we said, Saliba is up there in the top three for defence. So all Arsenal is the way to go in defence. Sack is actually the leading scorer in midfield at two. So, you know, for those that want to go triple defence, you do, you know, have to find room for Saka, high scorer, and, you know, that value is is too good to miss out on. Um, <clears throat> in saying that, I am considering moving Saka on to Son in game week 34 when Son, you know, starts to have his double game weeks and, and stuff. Um, but I guess we don't need him this week. And then, um, you know, against Newcastle's all right. He blanks. But then they do play um, Arsenal in game week 35 as well as Chelsea and then Liverpool. So, you know, while they do have a good run in terms of the number of fixtures, 
they do have a lot of tricky ones to finish the season. So definitely something we need to weigh up is the opportunity against, you know, the, the actual reality of what will probably happen. Um, but yeah, other than that, you can see we've got Saka, Salah, Foden, Pump. So we've got two of the top defenders, four of the top midfielders, uh, and two of the top three attackers. Obviously, Ollie Watkins. Um, after this week, his fixture does open up a little bit. So maybe one of the players that we target for game week 34. Um, do they have a double? I just forgot to look at that. No, just a single. So not urgent. Looks like, yeah, they've only got singles for the rest of the season. But obviously, you know, if he's scoring more goals than everyone else, he's probably one we want to have in our team potentially. So, yeah, so I guess, you know, given how well positioned our squad is currently, I don't think we need to, uh, to do too much. You know, we could look at these options that aren't playing in the double um, game week. So, obviously, Bravka's not. But um, Newcastle do have that good run and they have a double in game week 37. So, probably not worth two trades, particularly, you know, his value is 4.2 and we can only sell him at 4. Um, Ayat Nuri does have the double game week in game week 34. Admittedly, Arsenal is not a great fixture. Um, for attacking stats or defensive stats, I suppose. Um, but then, you know, Bournemouth and, you know, with that sort of tricky run afterwards, he's one we can flip to a uh, game week 37 double game week guy. So we don't need to trade him straight away. Um, Gusto, you know, we've talked a little bit about Tottenham. Chelsea's in the same boat. Double game week 35, double game week 37. Um, I guess the only thing is we'd have to check on Reese James. If I can find him. So, yeah, still unknown. So, you'd imagine he's still the preferred right back option. Um, just, I guess, the thing was rested last week uh, with DeSarcy filling in on that edge. Uh, yeah, so the big guys in the. So, we've already talked about Newcastle. So. Gordon and E. Sacker in that same boat. And Solanke's the other one. So he does have the double this week. Um, and then, you know, he's probably the one we could try to flip to Watkins um, in time for that game week 37. So, you know, like, we've got these guys that uh, we're planning on trading. And I guess, you know, a couple of the others, like obviously Bradley and, and maybe Keller will have to go. Obviously trying to find money for that is going to be the the fun part um yeah and it's just you know maybe through like trading out a Saka uh, or a phone or we could be sacrilegious and, and you know chop up one of these big guns like a Salah or a Haaland in order to um to really attack you know some of those other positions but yeah, that would be obviously a big call. It probably does come down to, I guess, how they go in Europe in the next week. Obviously, uh, Liverpool this morning, our time here in Australia, didn't do much good against Atlanta, but um, they've come back from 3-0 down before and could easily do it again. <laughs> Whereas Man City, obviously, in a, in a bit of a scrap with uh, Madrid, I believe. Can't fully remember, but I'm pretty sure it was Real Madrid. So I guess, you know, if one of these guys gets freed up from the European competitions, um, you could potentially fade the other one and, and just, you know, really lean in on the, uh, the guy who's focusing on winning the Premier League. So, yeah, not too much in terms of trades this week because I am, or transfers, I should call them, because I am planning on holding. So I guess we've just got to put our team together. So I think Kelleher against Crystal Palace is a better chance for a clean sheet than uh, Dubravka against Tottenham. Uh, the two Arsenal guys are obviously locked into our defence and we'll, we'll sort of double down on the Liverpool clean sheet with Bradley. Um, midfield four, you know, the four top scorers. Um, so while, you know, we talked about Dubravka's probably not got an ideal matchup with Tottenham. Isak against Tottenham. You know, Tottenham's defence, they do leak a goal, but they'll back themselves to score two to win. So um, I think, 
this week we might bring in Solan um, Gordon rather for Solanke. Um, and we'll play the two um, Newcastle guys. Uh, and then on our bench, probably leave Solanke as first option. Obviously in the, the front seven. Ike Norrie against Forrest isn't a bad um, fixture. Neither is um, Gusto against Everton at home. Um, probably the I guess the home ground advantage will probably be the difference. So we'll switch those two. Plus maybe the little yellow uh, triangle isn't ideal. So then we just got to pick captains. So Luton are obviously, um, you know, not the strongest defence. So I'm thinking Harlan captain, Salah vice captain, nothing too out of the ordinary there. Um, and we'll save the team. So I guess spent a bit of time talking about, you know, the future trades and options and, and that. But, um, yeah, I guess just holding fire this week, going to double transfer next week with the double game week. And then, obviously, our bench boost is still sitting here ready for game week 37. So uh, I think we can wrap the video up there. So, as always, if you've got any questions, comments, thoughts, feel free to get them below the video. Uh, if you enjoy the FPL content, give the videos a like. Uh, subscribe for all the fantasy sports content on the channel and other than that we'll catch you in the next one mm -hmm.